Wow, what is that crazy, crazy sound? This is F Expansion's BFD2 8 bit kit expansion pack. It is a tremendously powerful Sonic toolkit, but today we're not going to be talking about it. We're going to be talking about. I'm going to reset BFD2. Okay, clears my workstation. I'm going to load a kit. I'm going down to my Yamaha Hip Gig kit. You can download this off their uh, the website and uh, pay for it and download it immediately. It's a nice tight little kit, but at, while it's loading, let's talk a bit about this thing called a cocktail kit. Imagine yourself going to a smaller room venue such as a museum, art gallery, maybe a corporate function where you've got a small footprint for your band, three or four guys, uh, you've got your room is constantly shifting because people are constantly walking around. Tables are bring, being brought in, trays are being brought in, carts are coming in. It's a constant ebb and flow of people, which means sonically uh, your, your sound shape is shifting all the time. You've got people wearing heavy fabrics, tuxedos, dresses, suits that are absorbing all of your sound, almost like a carpeted room. So your lower frequencies are going to be lost, and what you need to do is have a higher frequency in your instrumentation to push through that, especially in your drums. So here's some example of cocktail kits. Small footprint, you know, essential elements. Uh, we're looking at a hip gig, which is very similar to this one here. Uh, the model that comes with BFD2 is basically your, um, your bass drum, uh, uh, two upper toms, and your, uh, your floor tom, and, sorry, no floor tom, and there's no symbols that come with it. So basically when it creates a kit, it uses the uh, the basic symbols that comes with BFD2. Now I've got the Bosphorus, Bosphorus uh, expansion pack, which is a really cool kit for symbols. And we'll talk a bit about that later. So this is your cocktail kind of drum concept. Now, here's my basic kit. Bass, snare, tom one, tom two. Now I'm going to change Go to my Bosphorus fat hats. Now I may not like this particular sound. Now the, the great part about BFT2 is you got to think of it as, as layers. Basically, there's the sound. If you went to a simple drum machine, you'd have that sample. But with this, we have many articulations. I'm going to go to um, a basic hat. Let's just see what uh, Ready to Rock sounds like. Not a lot of difference on this. A bit in the uh, in the EQing, you'll find that in the drums, there's uh, different tones, different use of reverbs, different sounds of the room. Um, I'm going to go for my large crash. I'm going to go to my Bosphorus. Let's go to my big 20 inch. My small crash. Let's go to my. 16 smash crash and my ride I'm going to go to my 20 inch pang fang mallet that's actually a crash I need a ride in there so I'll go back and there's my 20 inch ride so we've got the basic kit now what we need is a few beats so I'm going to go over to my grooves page I'm going to go to my palettes. Now a palette is a collection of rhythms so I'm looking at this 99 beats per minute 4-4 four, four time smooth jazz. If I click here I can actually audition what this palette's going to sound like. This is good. So I can say load that in. Now each of those different rhythms has been assigned to one of my keyboard controls if you have an external controller or just with my mouse. Remember, I brought this in at 99, 96, so I'm going to change my tempo. Change your tempo, I can either push up, pull down, or double click, and I can put in. Now, these up here are my fills. So you've got your, your main kind of... Uh, and courses down here, and then you've got a couple of fill, excuse me, fills up here. So let's uh, simple. So just need something simple here with the play. It's great. Now I'm going to go over to my mixer, and I'm going to bring down the volume a bit so that we can talk and work. I'm going to 
and isolate my base. You know what? That base is great, but what other sounds are there? Again, going into my articulations. Let's go down to low and dirty. Interesting. Maybe I want to dampen it up. It's just like putting a big old blanket in there. Just bringing up a volume a bit. Hard damp. Soft damp. Maybe I want to bring the tuning up a bit. Now also notice that as I change the articulations, uh, it's sending a different signal or routing a different signal to the overhead auxiliary microphones. So in the concept of, see all these microphones right here? See these are my overheads? I can space them out. Now isn't this interesting? As I space out the microphones, I'm actually getting a bit of a delay sound. Because what's doing is picking up it's picking up uh, sounds from a different position with the other mics. So you don't need to use uh, effects. You can play with just your microphones and just expand some of the sound, the sonic texture. So I got my, my groove going on, now my, my snare. Isolate. Bit of a ghost note in there. Here it comes, right there. What are there? Let's see what a small room. Now, Levon Helms was big on that, that woody sound. To me, this is that kind of woody, woody, woody sound. But again, it may not be exactly what you're looking for. So how can we play with it? I can adjust the damp. Again, a couple of more arti articulations. All right, there we go. It's not a bad sound. Maybe I don't want to send the overheads. Again, I'm just clicking on it and dragging. So you have all this control. This is the incredible part about BFD2. Is I can sit here and I have total master control as if I was sitting in the studio. But the best part is you're not spending $10,000 just to record your microphones. It's all been done for you. Or sorry, not recording your microphones, recording your drums and buying all these different microphones. This has all been done for you. So now it's just a matter of going in and tweaking the sound you want. Let's look at our mixer. I want to go to my hi-hat. I'm going to find my hi-hat. My hi-hat is right there. So I'm going to isolate it. Cast. I just want I just want a hint of delay on there. I'm just gonna bring in my delay. These are all the defaults. Nothing that really stands out. So what I'm gonna do What I'm looking for is to create a bit of a ghost note, that that little that, that little purdy sound. that little bit of a hint of groove. And there it is. You know, we've got a, a small cocktail drum kit going along. Now, let's go to our grooves page, and I want to bring in some of these great symbols that I got. So I'm going to go down, and I'm going to find, don't crash, this is my ride. So I'm going to draw, and let's see what we get. Stop this, go back. A little over it. Now watch, I'm just going to drag this down to the bell. I'm going to choke it. So that's the edge. Here we go, choke. Now you need a little more space in there. I'm going to change from 16 notes to 32. Now I'm going to delete these.
these. I'm going to go to Erase, Erase. A little syncopation in there. I'm going to drive this. I'm just going to drop it just kind of randomly, see what you get. Sometimes, sometimes it's fun. You just move things around. 16th at 32nd note here. Now, it's too much ring for me. Come back, find my ride, and my is just dampen that down a bit. Oops. Takes a bit of the ring out. Or, there might be a different way it was recorded. You might go, you know what? That just doesn't fit with this one, so I'll go down and let's find a different ride symbol. Let's go to the Overheim ride. Now this is out of the 8-bit kit. Oh, that's just ugly. That's just ugly. Wow, there's a bit of a stereo left and right. Now, I don't need it to be that volume, so I'm just going to trim the volume down. Maybe I want to move it over to my right side instead of my left. Now that I've got a slightly different sound, I'm going to go back. Now you hear that choke come into play. Don't want the chokes there, so I'm going to click on Erase. And we're just going to kick them out. What can we do with this ride symbol? Maybe it's not quite the sound I'm looking for. Well, let's uh, let's see what happens if we put a little compression on it. It's different. Don't like it. So let's come down. Let's go to Bit Crusher. Let's just isolate. That's interesting. A little white noise. Not what I want here, though. Let's go into uh, frequency shift. Well, that's some interesting. Maybe I can use that in a different, a different song. It just jacks the frequency way up there to the top end. Let's go reverb. Nothing really there that helps, so I can just right click, say cut effect, and let's bring it back in. While well, I'm in the mixer, you know what? The bass is kind of heavy. Well, if all my volumes are down, why can I still hear my drum? Well, that's because of the, uh, it's going to its overhead uh, microphones, or the ambient microphones. Let's back to our rhythms. But functionally, that's the cocktail kit. Again, we haven't really made use of the... I'm just using my mouse for this. Don't have any control. But there is BFD2's Cocktail Expansion Kit.